When you went over to Baltimore, how did that work? Did you did the Orioles trade for you? Because they were just switching from the St. Louis Browns to Baltimore, but they wanted this kid pitching for them. So did well, you get? I, I don't remember exactly what they they uh, what the trade was. How I went there, but it was made during the off season, and uh, I don't remember exactly. When it was time for spring training, though, you were going to a new camp. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were fresh in Baltimore, so you came into your own, and not only were you given the ball uh, in, in the rotation of pitchers, but for this new team, you really delivered season after season after season. Well, of course, I, I, it was great. Paul Richards, the manager, thought a lot of me, and uh, uh, I worked well with young people. That was one one reason that uh, I think, uh, in fact, uh, some of a lot of times, a lot of times in before spring training, I'd go down and work with some of the young prospects they had pitching, and uh, and that's one reason they wanted me to be pitching coach and that, instead of coming home. But I came home. I think there was two daughters waiting for you, wasn't there? Oh yes, two daughters and, and a wife. It was a good move to come back home because. You had put in more time in baseball than some of those players dreamed of, uh, playing all those years, uh, well over a decade in the big leagues. You really earned your stripes. Well, uh, I'm grateful too as I look back. Uh, there's not many people in this world today or any other day that have had an ambition as a kid and reached that ambition. I know. So, uh, so I'm grateful and thankful every moment. For reaching that ambition all these years later, I believe the postman, when he comes to your front door, you just got done telling me before the tape started rolling, you still get fan mail uh, a few letters each day or and a, and a few each week. Well, that's right. You see, you saw a couple of them laying there. <laughs> and with the cards in them to sign to send by. I like that they're interested in baseball and you still get mail in your 80s. Well, it's... Uh, most of them, a lot of them, uh, they pick a certain uh, team or some way, and these cards are sold in a lot of these card shops, and they have these programs. And it's, I was uh, one morning, about three o'clock in the morning, I got a call, and this guy from LA called me, and the, he had bought a jersey uh, a shirt. Sure with uh, my number on it and wanted to know if it was really authentic. He said, I've just paid $400 for this to go in my in my den. And I said, well, I cannot, without seeing it, I couldn't tell you whether it's authentic or not. But if it is one that has my name in, in Broderick inside of it, it is probably one that I wore back then the uniform, the uniform from the major league, was usually sent down to the minor leagues. So very likely, this was a, a real uniform that I had worn at one time. And they wore wool back then too. Yes. I don't know what they were thinking. Well, they wasn't thinking. <laughs> <laughs> with your with your time with the Orioles, you were surrounded by a lot of good ball players: uh, uh, George Kell, Brooks Robinson, Luis Aparicio. Um, who did you spend time with with the Orioles? Who was one of your buddies? Well, we spent a lot of time with Brooks. Uh, Brooks has been by here to see me a couple times in the off season. And Brooks is, is president of the Major League Baseball Association. And uh, of course, and Brooks was very, very close when he first came up. And uh, there was a Catholic priest, priest uh, Father Solomon, that he and I was very close with. And in fact, uh, he, he married Brooks when he got married. Really? Right. So uh, there's a. He, I believe he met his wife on an airplane. Right. She was an airline hostess, stewardess, whatever you call it. A very lovely person. 
It must have worked because just like you and your wife, they're still together all these years later. That is 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 really a little un unusual today. Yes, of course. Uh, here, uh, what I've, I've been married sixty some years now. So uh, that's a great question. You know, you don't need to be a baseball player to be asked it. If uh, some young married couple did ask it, they would say the obvious question. What advice do you give? What's the key? Well, uh, my key is first is to love one another and make up your mind before you do something and stick with it. You know there's no two people's not going to have some little now and then something's got to come up. You've got to be able to, to ride the rocks and reach for the clouds that's always there if, if you reach for them. So uh, it, it's not easy, but it's great. It's lovable. I don't want to fight it out there. I agree. Uh, well, not many people get to say 60 years, let alone 16 years, but you, you've got over 60 in it. Oh, oh yes. We got, we got married in 1940s. Uh, 1947. 47, 65 years out. Mm -hmm. When, when you were um, going to this last move, you had left the Orioles, and uh, since I left here this morning, I decided to read as much as I could for you about you on the computer. And they talked about this knuckleball on the computer. How did you? How was your way of holding it? Uh, in fact. They, well, they talked about you and the knuckleball. How, how did you hold that thing? Well, I held it more or less like most a lot of people, but I, there is a way that I threw One the underneath, knuckleball. two on the side, and that thing would float. Well, it was floating some, but mine, what will have the one that really floated like this, mine was harder and, and but, but, but moved. And that's one reason I think my control was so much better. I had very good control. And uh, I think uh, the last year with, with Houston and 120 some Indians, I only walked 22 men. That's, so, that's incredible control. Right. Did, can you say that when you threw that knuckleball, you could actually put it where you wanted to? Well, no, and you didn't try to put it in a certain place. You just tried to get it over the blade. Yeah. It hoped and depend upon the movement to keep the batter from from hitting it. But I got you. They, whether it was high, low, or, or where, just but by the same token, I did have such good control. I had a lot of people that would ground out on pitches that was a little off of the plate Okay. on the first or second pitch instead of trying to, didn't want to get behind it, you have to hit the knuckleball. Ah, so I get you. that is and another thing, being that way, my fielders was always more alert. They fielded greater behind me. Okay. I had great backing. So Now you also hit very few batters. You almost hit the least amount of batters during your time in baseball. So uh, I was reading about that statistic, which is is crazy, crazy low. I didn't know, didn't know anything about it that, that they had a statistic such as. Uh, it's it. What it means is that usually with the word knuckleball, the one thing that they don't associate is unbelievable control. So you not only had the knuckleball, you had unbelievable control. So it's, but. In Houston, that's where I got, kept reading, you had a great ERA. You didn't walk people. You didn't hit people. And everything was going right for you as a pitcher. In Houston, they just didn't score any runs for you. Well, Houston was a young team just starting out. Uh, in fact, they played in the old stadium, which was the old wooden stadium, like the, we grew up around here with. And... Uh, so, uh, but, but it still was a baseball game. Yeah. You, you gave a, a good stat uh, to me earlier today. They, they had this guy named Mickey Mammel. Um, how many home runs did he hit off of you? Uh, he hit uh, seven home runs off of me. But? 
only the only two of them was anybody on base. <laughs> you didn't give up a lot of runs to Mickey as compared to some other pitchers' home runs. Well, no, but that was my my object and my uh, try to work to keep when he did hit a home run. It wasn't anybody on base. Well, only two out of seven times isn't that bad. Well, no, it's not that bad, but I wish it hadn't been that many. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you hit over 500. Um, with, um, with being in the game that long, it's a different game that you see on TV. So, with the last two questions of the interview, when you look at the game on TV now, there has to, first of all, there's only 16 teams when you play. There's almost twice as many teams. There's 30 teams now. Who, who do you like to watch? You know, the, what certain players uh, catch your interest on TV? Well, usually I like to watch the Yankees. And since in this area we get the Atlanta Braves okay. every night. So uh, I, I watch them and then occasionally I will watch, find somebody else and watch them. It, uh, uh, Mostly, though, my interest boils down to what the Baltimore Orioles are doing. And they were doing pretty good for a while. Now yep. they've lost off there in the third place. They had a good run, though, this year. Well, they, they did. And uh, so hopefully they'll make the playoff. And this now... Uh, uh, winning your division is great, but if you can get to be the playoff, uh, anything you can have, happen. you can get a chance to win the World Series, which is everybody's uh, desire. Last Orioles question: You handed me this program, and I read every word in the program. You got flown up to Baltimore with your family. Uh, such an honor, and all the people that were there uh, for your induction, but. Not too long ago, you were inducted into the Baltimore Oriole Hall of Fame. Uh, quite an honor to be brought up to Baltimore to be put in their Hall of Fame. Well, it, it was quite an honor, and I guess it's one of the greatest honors I ever had. And it, <clears throat> one of the greatest things for me, Billy, was that I was able to take my children yeah. and some of my grandchildren to a Major League Baseball game with 50-some thousand people in which they, they couldn't believe in riding in the big limousine and the crowd <laughs> parting. Yeah. They didn't want to come home. I don't blame them. Uh, uh, Last question has nothing to do with the Orioles. It has to do with a very short period of time with one team. The Yankees. 1962. They were on the way to the World Series and they wanted a veteran to make sure that he was there Insurance policy is what they usually call it. You you were traded over to the Yankees before the Astros, Colt 45s, and you spent a little bit of time there. Yeah, I spent a little time there, but I was not really what they wanted, I guess. But and an, and another thing was that the Paul Richards at the Houston Colts I had played for and been with. Uh, I played for him on the Pacific Coast League. And uh, if you look, I played for him about everywhere he went. <laughs> and he was there, so that's where I went. Uh, I was at the Yankees only the tail end of one season and started with the other one, and then went to Houston. Was it odd for you to sit on that stool in that locker room and put on pinstripes? <clears throat> Yankee pinstripes, after all those years. Orioles, Red Sox. Well, it's... Uh, part of the game. You were surrounded by Barra, Scour, Maris, Mantle, Ford. Well, th th this is true. They were great players. All of them about it are in the Hall of Fame. And in fact, Yogi Bear uh, was one of the, he never got the, he got a lot of credit, but he didn't get the credit he deserved. If you look at him, I bet he got as many hits that one ball game, he was like a 290 hitter, but he got more hits to that one ball game than Mickey Mantle did. In the clutch, he In could be counted. Is right. In Casey Stengel's biography, 
he said, if I was only ever allowed to pick one player, it was an expansion draft, and I get to pick any player in baseball, but I, he was a player that I managed. Out of all the players I managed, my pick would be Yogi Berra. Well, I, I can agree with him there. I don't blame him for that. I thank you for your time, Hal Skinny Brown, and I hope you stay as sharp as you are because it was a great interview. Well, I enjoyed it myself, Billy, and the best of luck to you and your endeavor. I'm sure that and hope you influence a lot of people for the betterment. It's not hard when you have cooperative suspects like you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you very much. All right, sir. I appreciate your time.